So first diorama ever, and then doing it with Brent from Goobertown? Are you kidding me? There are so many options. Do we start from scratch? Do we repurpose something? Seems like it makes sense. It's actually quite overwhelming. Not a lot of stuff to paint and not a lot of time. Get some chopping done. Let's just be transparent. Of course I'm a challenge. Like, that's a big piece of drink to jump back into. <laughs> just wanna do it! I don't care what it takes! But Dave, he's gotta get in the zone. Right now, I have zero thought in my brain as to what this is gonna look like. He's gotta deal with a whole lot of mental blocks. Here we go. Focusing, focus. He's gotta be mentally prepared, emotionally prepared. It's not right. If he knows what my role is in this, then that'll help us both. Now we're crafting. Back to the project, no more distractions. <laughs> well, Dave invited me. I'd never been to the bunker before. <laughs> Heck, it's been a long time since I've been to Canada. We did this Cinecore, cool, one page rules, bat rep, and now we're here at the bunker, and we get to do something different to make something fun. Dave and I are working on a vignette, a diorama, some sort of little storyboard, except we're making it a big storyboard. Making terrain tutorials, that's how we started. Doing all those things on the YouTube channel. Today, for you special exclusive members, I'm gonna make some runes. Into a small little point like that. Miniatures in here. It's incredibly important. And there you have it, Wargamers. Battle Ruins. I haven't done this stuff in like a decade, so I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay, we started off with some simple rules. Dave's in charge of terrain, I'm in charge of minis. Right now, it's like, it's like a snow globe in my head of ideas, and it's just not settled yet. But it's exciting because it's new, and Brent's into the hobby stuff, so we'll see what it turns out into. Size dwarfs, like just extras laying around. I'm gonna grab a couple of those just for uh, testing color schemes. Okay, very good, Dave. Very good. <laughs> awesome. Since we're at the bunker, we decided to do something a little bit different. We have access to the core STL files. Ravage Star is a physical product in the 32 millimeter scale. And so we were able to print those figurines up big. So these are resin prints. Now these printers go fast. They do layer by layer by layer by layer of resin. Now after it's printed, you take it out of the printer, you wash it off, you remove the supports, give it a little bit of a cure, and then I spend some time filing off the nubs. Once that's done, we can prime them up and get to painting. My role in this project is to do the terrain. Seems like it makes sense. It's actually quite overwhelming. Dave is looking for some pieces that he can cobble together to get a head start on this terrain project that we're doing. There are so many options. Do we start from scratch? Do we repurpose something? Do we do a combination of both? Dave found some stuff. He's like, this, don't mind if we spray paint this. This, don't mind if we snap these things off. Okay, you can have them. Dave's looking around, thinking about terrain, thinking about painting some terrain, but we got him. We got him. Eventually, we found this terrain piece that Lee made once upon a time many years ago. It's not completely finished, and it needs to be finished. This is your fate. And uh, yeah, that was the process for gathering the, the materials and the ideas 
for what this little diorama is going to be. Goober Town collaboration, day two. Let's see what we're doing. We've got a bunch of plaster. We have a bucket for whatever we might need it for. Spray paint. We got some black, white, and we have this from, I think this was a hardware store. Ah, nostalgia's killing me. Ah. Here it is. I knew it. Yes, it's perfect timing. It honestly could not have been better. And this side too. Are you kidding me? Remember, uh, like, I don't know, 15 years ago when we do terrain tutorials? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's happening again. It all comes around full circle. Sure does. There's, there it is. <laughs> You're really tired. <laughs> We're collecting some footage. We're going to see what happens. I love films. I love filmmaking. Right now, I have zero thought in my brain as to what this is going to look like. I'm so distracted by all the awesomeness and you're, you're getting stuff done and I'm getting nothing done. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there, okay. buddy. Okay, all right, okay. So this is what we have assembled and we have one day left to make uh, this look good. <laughs> so we've got two dwarves, we've got three demon dogs and we have cobbled together from the archives this set of stairs and a platform got a, a radar dish. So the core of this is we've got a guy with a minigun, he's shooting from the hip. We've got leaping demon dogs. What are they called, Dave? Gork dogs. So I think the, the key to this is to have this interaction of the leaping gork dog and this uh, Imani Pathfinder. Amari Pathfinder. Imari that Pathfinder. one I remember. You're the true like like workhorse artist here who's like, gonna do a lot of work and I'm gonna be distracted the whole time really trying to do anything. One day, Dave, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get back to painting, and I'll come back and check on you, and this will just be covered in wet sand. <laughs> so three challenges. One, finding all those tools that I need. Two, getting stuff done myself. Three, getting my buddy Dave to get stuff done. This is in two pieces, then I can connect the platform with the stairs. <sighs> nope, I wanna do it all, don't I? Yep, I want it to all be one piece. Some minis prepped and cleaned up and assembled and primed and base coated, at least with the airbrush. How you doing, Dave? Uh, I, I got some glue in a bucket. Yeah. Um... We got to get Dave to stay on task. Dave needs to be painting. Sometimes I'm just looking over there. Dave, there's no paintbrush in your hand. What's going on here, Dave? I'm going to get a few more paints and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to sit with you and I'm going to paint with you as you uh, glue sand. I'm gonna be painting the whole time. I'm just gonna be like, how's the sand coming, Dave? I think that might be necessary <laughs> moving forward. I got you, buddy. Yeah. I got you. Okay, all right. Glue, but sand, bucket. Come on, move. Okay, we got this. We're doing it all with one hand. Do we open it with one hand? That was luck, guys. Like, the sand. Might be a little bit too much sand. Got some brushes, that's important. It'll probably get destroyed in the process. Weapons of war. We don't need this bucket anymore. You shall not pass. Hello. Well, thank you, Skull Terrain, for being here, distracting me because you look awesome. Who made this? If you're watching this and you made this, let me know in the comments. Focus. As a responsible adult that um, I'm projecting to be right now, just be careful, guys. Your eyes are important. Don't be silly. Protect them. So first off, there's these trees on it. Brent suggested that we take them off, and I totally agree with this, because the scale was a little off, so do I take them off, do I rip them off, do I cut them out? You know what we're gonna do? Sometimes we need to just chop down some trees. Let's get some chopping done. So I end up digging them out, and there's a few craters, some sharp edges, I had to file them down, and I decided to use paper mache with a little bit of leftover plaster on the inside to kind of smooth them over. Kind of looks like you're painting a bug gerbil. Is it gerbil? The, the scale is throwing me off. It's a wonderful scale. Brent's super patient. He used the whole time, you know, like a true art teacher. He was just like, okay, now back to work. It, you can say what you're saying as long as you have a brush in your hand and continue working. At one point, I even had my kids here. We had dinner here, because we weren't leaving the bunker until there was more paint on this project. Do you need to be the one to uh, complete this task? You do, right? They were helping with stuff. They were gluing supports on the bottom of the platform, and they were helping the process along. 
got something happening over here. And a bottle flip right there as it happens. That's attempt number four. Five. Unless it's eight, it doesn't count. Oh, that's seven. You got it. You already got it. And eight. The, uh, the amount of uh, progress on the on the project, Brent, since uh, they've arrived has actually exponentially, uh, yeah, it's, it's insane how much more uh, progression. And then I had this idea of kind of sealing everything in with a common texture, and that was the flex seal. Okay, got some sand. Got some of this flex seal. Okay, we're gonna start. It's bubbling up. Add some grit. Yeah, there it is. What, what's the appeal here, you know? <laughs> I just remembered I'm on a microphone here. <laughs> like, yeah. So we have Mike here, Epic Duck Mike. Very nostalgic. It's been many years, over a decade, since we've engaged in a terrain-specific project, man. Yes, it's been a while. Okay, like this is, we're talking like Mike the Necron guy days. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has done many things, uh, if you've seen his stuff, but one of the things uh, that you would probably may have seen is the comic book style art uh, painting, miniature painting. That, that, that's my jam. So my plan for the terrain is to just dry brush different colors. Yeah. And then pick and out just, certain you know, areas. Then, like your goal first should be painted and on the table. Especially if you need this for tomorrow. It would be wonderful, but you need six months line. Tell me, what is it? I don't understand what I'm actually trying. It's like running an 88 kilometer race. I don't know what it was required to train for it. I just want to <laughs> do it. I don't care what it takes. What does it take to do the comic book style, Mike? Well, it's like running an 88 kilometer race. You do it one kilometer at a time. Okay. But it takes a long time to do that. <laughs> it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a giant staircase with some doors. And yeah. Yeah, you don't want to do this comic style. Okay. No. Right. So dry no. brushing. That's something. Dry brushing is the way to go with this. That's a big piece of drain to jump back into, that. too, right? Like, like it's that's two feet across. <laughs> it's not like you're like starting with like, let's paint some dumpsters. Like it's like, no, let's paint a mountain. <laughs> so here we go. We're on the inside now. Okay, with this next step. Oh, you got, you got it. That Last part's dry. Yeah. That part yeah. we can work it took on. 15 minutes. We got this piece from outside inside now. It's on the table. Yeah, yeah that's... Okay. We're working in zinc time right now. Time's a flat circle. Just I flat. didn't know I was coming to paint, so I didn't bring things. I mean, this will this will take a dry brush very, very nicely. Yes. yes. Take some like some light brown, just kind of splat it on it, make it look like rusty in some spots. It'll be super easy. Super easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that happened by accident. Yeah. That like gunmetal steel kind of color. Ooh. That happened by accident. That's the happiest of happy accidents. That's some Bob Isn't Ross right there. Blue? This is so silly. It's like this feeling of accomplishment. It's only one like dabbing dry brush, not even dry brush, whatever. He's been painting like a madman. He's getting stuff done. He's doing rust effects. He's doing weathering. There's moss on things. He's spraying stuff. He's leaving terrain out in the rain. So this was outside drying uh, and you know, it started raining. So here's the beating up water, but because it's flex seal and it's like legit supposed to be water repellent on eaves troughs and stuff, it's actually, we just need to dab it dry. And I think this is a happy accident, Mike. That is a very happy accident. Because there's paper mache under there. Like if there you is. put regular primer on there, it would just be, there would be a puddle of just like garbage outside now. <laughs> I mean like there's a mountain and then there's just some toilet paper on the ground, like. Once I got into it, I got into a groove. I got into a zen zone. It was awesome. And then it just was done all of a sudden. Looks like Dave's pulled ahead in the terrain race here. Yeah. The terrain's looking pretty dang good right now. Yeah, Th thanks, Brent. I, yeah, we got, I we got a rusty platform. We got a, a stony and mossy uh, stairway here. Through the power of friendship, we have a very nice antenna painted by Mike Cousins, Epic Duck Studios. Yes, and thank that's you, Mike. Gonna, Plop right on down on the, the old rusty platform. And I wanted to keep on going. It's midnight. We still have some work to do on the minis. I took a look at the Gork Dogs, and Brent had primed them, but they weren't finished yet. And so it's like, Brent, are you cool if I, if I finish those? Yeah, Gork Dogs are yours. I want to do more. Like, 
I still have some creative energy, man. Like okay, and you know what? I could decide to stay up a little later. Mm -hmm. You know, special occasion, special project. Some movement needs to happen. Like okay, well, I'm just gonna paint the Gorkog now. You said you wanted to test out some uh, some dry brushing. Now's yeah. your chance. I wanted look at that. Look, yes. perfect dry brushing textures. Like I believe in you. Yes, thank you, Brent. It doesn't really matter who works on what. Complete pivot in the project. Well, and I was very excited to try some dry brushing techniques that Byron showed me at UK Games Expo. Good morning. I got work done. Yeah. Yeah. Bases match. A little bit darker, gonna like highlight with more red up top. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea there. Yeah, no, you got them darker and redder, and that looks good like that. I like it. Brent, for this part, uh, I'm gonna do some dry brushing, and these are dollar store brushes, so they're not what I want them to be. They're not even dry brushing brushes, so I'm gonna use some artist outfits brushes that I got from Byron. Yeah, if you have them, yeah. you should try them. And, yeah, I'll and try see them out. if those work a little bit better. S see how they work. Um, yeah, I mean, these are close, I think, getting some bright red to really pop out the details there would be awesome. Um, I think you could use this. Could, yeah, that's, I mean. Right. This is not sponsored by Artist Opus. Um, I'm just simply going to use these brushes because I've enjoyed using them. So this is the natural evolution of the hobbying right now. Just imagine having this idea burning a hole in your brain and it's being locked inside you have no chance of using this thing. And finally you get a chance to unleash it. It was Byron's instruction for dry brushing these Gorkog. <laughs> it was like last night. I only slept for two hours. I was too excited. Well, we're not quite at the end. I'll tell you that right now. But I'll tell you, the terrain's looking good. The three monsters are looking good. The two dwarves are looking good. Dave and I work surprisingly well together as a team. I'm super excited to see the final cinematic shot of this diorama. That's like, that's the pinnacle of the project. That's the last step. Could I have done this without Brent? Of course I could have done it without Brent. It would have taken way longer. I love stuff like this. Collaborations are the best. Do I look forward to more? Obviously. Let's do more. What do you want to do? What would you like to see? What would you like to see? Anything, leave it down below. With whom? With Brent, with whoever else, spill your thoughts. Thank you guys for all of your support and making it so we can do this so that you can participate in it as well and have fun with us. I'm Mini Wargamer Dave. And this is a diorama made by Goobertown Hobbies and me. <laughs>